when I came to Tear Fund, I actually went, I thought, what have I walked into? To be honest with you, it was very small. Mm. There was a, a woman who was working there who, she was part time and she was doing some data entry. And I can remember, I'd been there a couple of months and she looked at me and said, you know, ever since you've been here, our donations are going down. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, I mean, it's not what I wanted to hear, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, when I came, I, I, I promised the board who hired me that I could make it work. Yes. And I thought Tear Fund, it actually had all the ingredients were there. It had a very strong church focus, Christian community focus. It was very committed to the issues of um, social justice, biblically represented. Um, and it, it was ready and primed t- to grow. What, what we did was we really put a lot of energy into, first of all, convincing the board of the day that spending money on advertising and marketing and promotion was a good thing to do. And also got a good journalist in to help us get copy out. And, and we really started to, we, we scratched around everywhere to promote. A lot of speaking in churches, a lot of getting the message out. Um, and Rima too was particularly helpful to us because I was able back then to, to bring a, a, a vision and an idea uh, to John Fabron and others to have them really get their, their heads around what Tear Fund was doing. And they caught the vision and really gave us a lot of support. So that was appreciated. When we started to do the Compassion Days, mm-hmm. and we were able to start to, to get the, the vision and opportunity for child sponsorship out in public, that's also a place of where we really grew. The other thing that really got us on the map too was microcredit and microenterprise. Mm-hmm. That's the idea of creating a community banking structure in poor communities where poor entrepreneurs can have loans that they would not otherwise get or would have to pay high rates from loan sharks to start small businesses and then pay back to the community to where another entrepreneur can have. And, and, and that I think that caught the imagination also of a lot of New Zealanders. Mm-hmm. I think basically Kiwis, and kind of rightly so, that they're not, they're a little bit adverse to handouts. Yep. You know, they, they want to see um, kind of a partnership with people to be able to grow and develop in their, in their own way. So, so, so microcredit did that. The other thing that we had was we started to develop a disaster relief capacity, which we had never had before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that over the last 18 years, I've certainly noticed a growing number of disasters. It was interesting that about 2003 we made a decision that we were going to have in place, ready to go on a moment's notice, a uh, an advertisement that could be, um, it was kind of almost like um, a paste, a paste up. You know, all you had to do was paste in the name yep. of the disaster, put a voice over, and we could have it on air within 24 hours. Yep. Likewise, a donor base ready to go just in case. Mm. 2004, we were looking at having our first ever decrease in income. We were going to go from about 5.8 to about 5.5. Boxing Day 2004, I woke up to find the tsunami was on. Uh, we were on TV, on radio, in newspapers within 24 hours. And, you know, by the end of the week, Tear Fund was known all over the country. And, uh, and we that year, we ended up at $9 million. And we've never gone under that since. So that also was a, was I, I was a God moment for Tear Fund. When you look at what were some of the, the significant aspects of your time with Tear Fund, and uh, I mean, thinking in particular of, of things that impacted you, I've, I've heard uh, in particular there was a significant experience in a Sri Lankan refugee camp. I was able to get into a, an internment camp for Tamil refugees and 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 suspected um, supporters of Tamil tigers, and I couldn't even begin to explain the um, the, the bedlam that I walked into. Um, uh, people um, suffering extreme shell shock and children from from bombings, um, shootings, limbs missing. In particular, this woman who came up to me and just grabbed my arm and showed photographs of the family she no longer had and broke into tears and I and just sobbed on my arm and I can remember that being a moment of of real challenge for me breaking down a, a an image of God who is in such utter control that everything 
has 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 some kind of purpose and I could see no purpose in this whatsoever I didn't see why this woman suffering or the people around me suffering why it was so important for God's final plan and design and so that really caused a crisis of faith as I said never to walk away but confident that I could go deeper and try and get my head around really where where is God in our world and and, and, and what really is the, the truth of that. And, I, and that's been a journey over the last four years. And um, it, I, I think uh, that instance has really spurred me on to explore that, that whole question further. Leaving a legacy, passing the baton on to others, are you leaving some pretty big shoes to fill, Steve? No, you know, um, and I'm not trying to be um, uh, falsely, a false humility here. I mean, the ball is always in God's court. But I think a tear fund. I don't think, what's Tierfunk going to look like in two or three years? Mm. What's Tierfunk going to look like in a hundred years, yeah. you know, or, or 50 years, you know? And, and everybody who's there now will be passing the baton on. Mm. And so that has been part of, of, of what I've done, is just being there, done my best like everybody else, passing the baton on, and I'm looking forward, I'm, I'm really, I'm honestly looking forward to a, to a change mm. and to new things. What I'm uh, looking to do is I think I have um, learned an enormous amount, both from my work in interchurch trade and industry mission and tier fund, to help resource local NGOs, community groups, uh, and, and community trusts here in this country, as well as sustainable small businesses mm -hmm. in issues like promotion, fundraising, strategic planning, uh, and helping them actually be able to be better resourced to get on with the job here in New Zealand yeah. and and that's something I'll be part of. I'll continue one international thing I will continue with I'll continue my role as the International Director for the World Evangelical Alliance Peace and Reconciliation Initiative mm -hmm. so we still have connections there with Southern Sudan, uh, Middle East, uh, Nigeria and Philippines. I want to continue that work helping to resource that but that'll be part-time I want to get chickens, I want to work on getting my garden, I want to get sustainable, finally get around to mowing the lawns as you can see, yeah. uh, fix the guttering on the house. I like to do a little bit of writing and praying and getting my life a little bit more deeply uh, aligned um, with what God is calling me to. But yeah, I'm excited and mm -hmm. like I said, there's a great team. Steve, thank you for your example. Thank you for making the world a better place through the work that you've done and thanks for your time today. And thanks for your friendship, Andrew. We've had some good good trips together ourselves, man, yeah. so thank you very much. Yeah.